Welcome to Washington. I'm still reporting on the economy. Today we are reporting from McLean Family Restaurant. Our topic today, if returning to a gold-backed money system isn't the solution, then what is the solution? Monetary reformers believe that debt-free, government-issued money is the only answer. But can we trust the government with the money power? Can we trust those rascals in Congress? The short answer is, government is all we've got. The history of Western civilization has been the history of humankind trying to escape serfdom and gain freedom by having some say in their own governance. The first breakout was in Rome. About 300 BC, the Roman Republic supplied the people with a plentiful form of cheap money, money made from copper and bronze. Then they spent this cheap money into the economy. It was a revolutionary idea. Today, opponents of this money system call it fiat money, money not backed by precious metals. But what the Roman Republicans had discovered was that it doesn't matter what backs the money, all that matters is who controls its quantity. Did it work back then? It was amazingly effective. Unlike today, it was a money system created without debt to the government. This was the first great experiment in wresting the money power from the goldsmiths. This cheap form of money circulated for the benefit of all citizens equally, not just the usual gold coins, which always benefit the rich. With this new plentiful supply of money, real wealth and real freedom flowed to the common man. What does that mean? The average person had freedom. What's freedom? Freedom from the serfdom system of those who own the gold. The results were spectacular. The greatest empire and the greatest decentralization of power that the world had ever seen. But then, suddenly, Julius Caesar changed the Roman money system drastically. He started minting gold coins with his image on them. Then he declared himself emperor for life, putting an end to Rome's great experiment in elected government and cheap money. A deep depression set in. The average person had to sell his property just to buy basic necessities. The wealth of the nation was quickly concentrated into the hands of the richest Romans once again, and Rome started its long slide into the Dark Ages. As we saw in our last report, about 1100 AD, King Henry of England wanted to diminish the power of the goldsmiths as well he created another form of debt-free, government-issued money called tally sticks. This took the money power away from the gold owners and put it into the hands of the government, which at that point was the king. The Secret of Oz goes into much greater detail about tally sticks. However, King Henry did more than that. He knew the issue was freedom. After initiating the tally stick system, King Henry made the first formal transfer of royal power to the common person. He granted something called the Charter of Liberties, voluntarily stating what his powers were under law. Before that, kings had assumed unlimited power. This was followed in 1215 by the Magna Carta, the basis of the U.S. Constitution. In 1265, just 50 years later, the first parliamentary elections were held. Government by the people in England was born. By the 1600s, serfdom in England was legally banned. Humanity, at least in England, was finally set free by law. The tally stick system remained until 1694, when the privately owned Bank of England was established. Suddenly, the money power was taken out of the hands of government once again and given back to the owners of gold. The result? 
By the mid-1700s, 75 percent of English taxes were paying just the interest on the debt-based money the Bank of England had initiated. England still had an elected government, but their government was now deeply in debt. Just as the rich rule the poor, so the borrower is servant to the lender. The history of America has been the history of Americans trying to escape this debt money system perpetrated on humankind by the same people over and over again throughout history, the largest owners of gold. The founders fashioned our Constitution to spread the powers of government out to the maximum degree practical. In other words, power spreads out gradually from the top to the bottom. This makes the U.S. government very slow, very ponderous, very difficult to get anything done, but very stable, very, very safe. With gold-only money systems, this power pyramid is steepened. Fewer people hold more power at the top. Easy to get things done, but as Lord Acton wrote in 1887, power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So, the history of the American government has been the history of whether the bankers, the ancient goldsmiths, would be able to corrupt this constitutional framework. Today, sadly, they have, especially since 1913 with the Christmas Eve passage of the Federal Reserve Act. The Secret of Oz details this struggle throughout the last 260 years when the American colonies first tried to break away from England's gold money system. But our government is not the problem. The problem is that the owners of gold, the big bankers, have corrupted the government, have bought our Congress. So today, only the shell, a facade of effective representational government remains. So let's not throw away that shell just because big bankers have figured out a way around the system. The plutocracy would love us to do that. They love it when we say, government is too corrupt for me to mess with, and government is too corrupt to have any more power, much less the money power. So let me ask you, if you don't trust the greatest of all powers of a sovereign government to be put into your hands through your closest elected representatives, who do you trust? There are only two choices. The money power is either in our hands through our government or it automatically goes back into the hands of the big bankers, the foxes in control of the chicken house. And that's the definition of serfdom. It might have a modern face on it, but it's serfdom just the same. With the money power back in the hands of Congress, you, the electors, are automatically empowered once again. Sure, the big bankers and their big money will be there, but their power will at least be significantly diminished and your power significantly increased. Government will be more responsive to you because the biggest bankers will no longer have a chokehold on the economy. Remember too big to fail? That's what I mean by a chokehold on the economy. Let them fail. No bank is too big to fail. They cheated the system. They took inordinate risks. They should fail. We don't need them. So this is a simple question between serfdom or freedom. Serfdom, steep power pyramid. Freedom, broad power pyramid. Serfdom, you have no control. Freedom, you have some control, your choice. If we only understand exactly what the problem is, there is still time to fix this, as long as the Constitution remains. The shell is still there. The framework the founders put in place is still strong. All we have to do is kick out the weasels and take back the greatest power of any sovereign government, the money power. Remember, they produce nothing. They simply buy, sell, and trade debt. We can take back control of our government, but we have to understand what we are fighting for and what we must never allow to happen again. I'm still reporting from Washington. Good day.